Hi, I'm Mary Barkey. I'm on the Orange County Board of Education, just recently re-elected for my second term in June. I also work for a nonpartisan think tank, the California Policy Center. One thing we've been doing a lot of lately is educating candidates. We're 501c3, so we can't campaign, but we work to educate them to help them so they know what's involved in running for office and then helping them govern once they get elected. Today, here with me is David Bacon, and he's got an incredible story. I think you'll want to hear a lot from David, so we're going to turn to David now. Thank you for uh, allowing us to be using the studio today as well. I wanted to start off by thanking VBS personally for allowing us to use this uh, lovely uh, equipment and all the gear and stuff to do this. And my name is David Bacon. I'm running for Monterey Peninsula Unified School District Board of Education. I'll be in District 2. And my pretty much my three fundamentals is the three golden Fs, faith, family, and friendship, or freedom. Faith, family, and freedom. And with that, there's the fundamentals of the, of the tier, se tier section of what we here in America do, which is usually the bottom up is how our structures, and this is what I think that we're lacking in our schools specifically, as well as the liberal arts section from in my specific district from what I've seen. So is there anything that you would prefer to ask me? Or? You know, I'd love to know, David, what, what make you decide to run for office that's a big step and I, I've noticed right now there's a lot of community members that really care about the community running for office as opposed to the traditional union supported candidates and others so what what made you run well at first let's uh, I'm gonna take us back to when I was 10 years old I was in Georgia I it was about 99, the year, the year was 99, I was in 10th, fifth grade. I was coming back from my school and after dinner, I was sitting in my room just contemplating. My mom came to check on me because I wasn't very quiet. I was, she didn't s suspect me to be so quiet because I'm always, you know, I was known as Wild Man Bacon as a kid. And so she was concerning, so she came and talked to me and I told her I didn't want to be a boy. And it puzzled her for a second and she looked at me she didn't say anything, and then I just said, can you take me to the doctor and put me on puberty blockers? And what? how old were you? I was 10. Wow. What 10-year-old knows the word puberty blockers and doctors? Yeah, how did you, how did I, you know that? Honestly, I felt like I was duped as a kid because I, I don't know exactly where it was started, but most of it felt like it came from the school because I came home from school from this, and mm -hmm. it was the first time I've ever heard about it, mm -hmm. and it was sporadic, and then later on in life, it would, like, it, in schooling and stuff like that, I got bullied, kept being called gay, and then I turned 18, 19 years old, I started going through the psychological gender dysphoria, and with that, it... It really gave me a different perspective on who I thought I was, mm -hmm. and it felt as if the two psychologists that I saw firsthand, uh, the first one tried to push me through like that day. Wow. This, and so uh, I, I was like, okay, that's a little too much. I'm just going to back away and go find someone else. So I went and did my research to find a second therapist, and or, you know, started with a therapist, and then she get, sent me, gave me a referral to go see a psychiatrist so they can prescribe me the medications mm. after my second session. Wow. So I was on the medications on my second session in, and they didn't even bother to look at my medical records because I was born with a heart def defect. I've had nine open heart surgeries. The eighth one was the time that should have lasted longer than it should have because I was on specific medications like spirolactone and Esperdal. And these two drugs are co-companies. The drug, drug manufacturers are actually Pfizer and Mer Merrick's, and we all know where those lead us, um, down some weird holes. And it's... All that stuff that I've learned through that and then growing through, I even went to the extent of getting my name legally changed. It's, I have it wow. um, on my passport, it said David. On my license, it said Lisa. On my birth certificate, it said Lisa. And then I have a second birth certificate that still says David on it because my mom never got rid of the original birth certificate. Thank goodness. Thank you, mom. I appreciate it. Um, and with that, but it still, it took me two years longer to put my name back. And when it did that, it wasn't, it was heartbreaking, to be honest. It was super heartbreaking because I, I felt as if they were, the government wasn't actually looking out for me. It seemed like they were the first time because I was, I was in and out of the Social Security office right then and there, got my name changed. 
boop, 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 album gone. Back, names changed. Now, when you try to revert back, they, it's like they throw you in the, the discard pile or something. You're not a top priority anymore. No, I'm not a top priority anymore. Wow. As an ex-transgender, I'm not a top priority. And with all that, and then understanding, and then I, I sat back for about four years. I was doing a lot of listening. I was doing a lot of reading. I was trying to understand and grasp what was really going on in my reality. Mm -hmm. And then I had to step out and see what the world reality was. Mm -hmm. So I started taking a bunch of classes and stuff like that about uh, economics and, and uh, philosophy and education and chi child's literature, um, the proper understandings of the K-12 education system and what should be done. And the ones that are having problems that I see, they, in my specific county, they have a grade A in diversity, but they have a C on average for their academics. Wow. So and it's very, dishearten it's very disheartening and discouraging to me. Yeah, it, it, it is disheartening when in education you're getting diversity as your top priority when we know that kids are way behind in their reading, arithmetic. And um, let's, not, let's also add to the fact that the two years of the whole pandemic that we just went through as oh. well with the face mask and now kids can't even, don't even know how to use their mouths, like motor function skills in the face is like gone almost. Yeah, that, from I what think I've that been was, hearing and yeah, reading. Especially for young children who so rely on facial expressions, I think it was very, very challenging. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm very uh, adamant about trying to protect those because I have my best friend. He has a specific disease. I can't talk too much about him. Mm -hmm. But I understand where they're coming from as, as kids and stuff because I grew up with him mm -hmm. and I saw his, I grew with him as a struggle with his struggles and stuff and me and him piggybacked off of each other because I had a struggle, he had a struggle. We were both having just this difference. We'd help each other with our homework and stuff. So I understand where there needs to be a specific type of need for a child and I feel that our teachers are lacking that one-on-one, -on -one, even if it's just for two minutes with that child, that one-on-one -on -one could change their life. And it seems as if we're just sticking to the, here's your paperwork, here's your grades, this is what you have to do, A, B, or C is your choice, and that's all you do, and that's your test. Like, mm -hmm. that's not learning to me. That's, mm -hmm. I looked at, I, I've seen that as like indoctrinating me to just know how to fill out a form and make myself compliant to whatever's mm -hmm. on the form. Mm -hmm. That's what I felt like that was, af looking back, that's what I feel like that was what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't seem, and then, because when I was going through all the classes, of my call of the college that I'm going to it opened my eyes to what liberal arts really was mm -hmm. and there's more to it than just your basic you know uh, uh, what 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 is you know two plus two is four yeah we have to keep our basic education and our basic standings but where we're going with it I feel like they're l throwing out what they call the um, the onology part of our life, livelihoods, under the uh, fundamental spectrum of our learning capabilities. And we're focusing more s mostly on the epidemiology of things where it's mostly just your ideas and your impressions. And that's what I'm feeling that that's what we're pushing for. And I get that our feelings, our ideas, and our impressions are important mm -hmm. to us. Mm -hmm. that's, that's good, that's our worldly view. However, what we see in our own selves has to be it has to have some type of moral good mm -hmm. and i don't think that we're teaching honor i don't think we're teaching courage mm -hmm. i don't think we're teaching um uh, uh what's, a, what's another good word um uh, respect mm -hmm. loyalty mm -hmm. these words are lacking i went to look at some of my old school photos of my sister back in the 80s they had these specific things in the high schools Mm -hmm. I, go, I went and looked at my high school photos, didn't have a single one of them on there. Mm -hmm. They had maybe be kind, be, uh, be uh, happy, be this. Mm -hmm. What is being kind specifically? I get kindness, because mm -hmm. that's a specific format, mm -hmm. but be kind is, wh what do you mean by that? Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm studying philosophy and I'm going, what are you meaning? Are, are you referring to this side or this side? And then I feel like we're lacking that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm mostly running for school board. And it's, it's something that I'm also passionate about because what I do in the community is I like to bring smiles and happiness to the community because I, I work out of the city that I'm going to be running in, but I talk to the people. I'm, I literally deliver things to people. I am actually a delivery guy. I ah. work in pizza. Ah, so I everyone love loves pizza. That's sure. why I say I bring smiles and joy to people. Absolutely. You can always bring a smile to anyone's face with a pie in, the ha with a pie in your hand. So I just say, why can't we just grab a slice and hang out? Mm -hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. what's all this woke ideology of trans this, trans that, they, them, it, 
Z Zims. What in the world are you going on? Like, can you just accept the fact that you're a human and just move on? I get it where we're coming from. I, I have empathy for you guys because I've been through the struggle and I understand what is actually going on. And it's, I come to the conclusion that it's transhumanism is the ideology behind it. It's this form of idea that they think we aren't human, we're, we're too human to be controlled, so they want to try and find a controlling aspect of it by um, putting in brain chips and forcing us to do this kind of stuff. I know it's kind of crazy to think that this type of stuff couldn't happen, mm -hmm. but just think about the other, just, just earlier today, there was a bill that was passed by Governor Newsom about um, allowing to use humans as fertilizer. Did you hear that? I did. I so did. I'm just saying, like, where are we going with all this? And if we don't protect our knowledge at the educational level, mm -hmm. our society is going to follow through. Mm -hmm. Because the famous quote that I love to death, because it was said by Abraham Lincoln himself, he says, the philosophy in the schoolroom will be the philosophy in the government in the next. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with that, it opened my eyes to see our philosophy is failing our students because they're only teaching one side. They're not teaching all four aspects of it. Yeah. I think what I hear you saying is that, that our priorities aren't always in the right place and you want to make sure that we go back to the priorities maybe that our founders had. You know, I wouldn't so much say go back all the way there mm -hmm. because we are living in a modern time so there mm -hmm. are some new ways. I, I feel like I'm part, I have a thing about me of be having that little bit of progressivism, a little bit of Theodore in me is mm -hmm. saying, it's okay to give a little bit, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. there's a, there has to be an amount that we have to acknowledge, okay, let's stop here. Mm -hmm. there, has to be an, uh, there has to be a break, and I feel that we're not putting the brakes, and, s and I feel like I'm, me and several other candidates in my area are trying to put the brakes on this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I, if I win this seat, and one other person wins the seat that puts three Republicans and or three like-minded thinking mm -hmm. people. Let's mm -hmm. just put it that way: three right. like-minded thinking people who have, who understand what's going on and wants to help save our students. Because we're not just protecting our students; we're protecting our future. Yes, yes. And I'm sick and tired of seeing what they're doing. No, and and um, I like to refer to it as putting the students first because we should be doing that and honoring parental rights, making sure they're part of the equation. I think definitely. that's very important. That is definitely important because there's this bill out about um, SB 107 that's sitting on Newsom's desk right now. He hasn't signed it yet, mm -hmm. but I think you guys should probably call him just so mm -hmm. you know, just call his office and tell him not to sign that bill because it's the uh, out of state transgender affirming care bill. Mm -hmm. And it's, I believe from my own studies of understanding the constitution, the state doesn't have the right, the legal right, to extend its law outside of its own state. And that's what this bill seems like it's doing, and that seems to be unconstitutional by the state itself and also federal. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it's all, not just breaking the state law, it's also breaking the parental rights laws that we have, because the parental rights laws is what protects our children, because they don't have, te technically by law, law standards, they don't have any rights until they're 18. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the, and, and if we're, and my, my, my whole concern about this whole transgenderism is, if the state of California's legal grounds right now, and in this current day, today, it is 21 to buy alcohol, 21 to buy weed, and 21 to, to rent a vehicle, or 25 to rent a mm -hmm. vehicle, mm -hmm. and, and stay in hotels and stuff like that. You have to be at least 25 with all this. But you're going to allow a 6-year-old or a 12-year-old to jump on these puberty blockers and screw up their lives? Like, I, and amputate them later on? Just think of, the, uh, of a recent lady. Uh, what's her name? Chloe. Chloe, mm -hmm. Chloe Cole. Mm -hmm. She, brave as, I oh, praise you. You are a most beautiful woman you are. Stay strong. Stay courageous. Mm -hmm. Stay in the fight. Don't let these people bring you down. I promise you, we have your back. I have your back personally. And we all need to stand as shields. That's mm -hmm. what I believe, mm -hmm. I believe. Absolutely. Absolutely. So tell me how you think running for office and winning can, can change this. What's the first thing you'll do when you win? Well, the first thing that I'll do is I'll stop this resolution that they're trying to push with the LGBTQ community. I understand you guys are going to hate me for saying it, but we need to remove LGBTQ com this LGBTQ ideology completely out of schools. No clubs, no none of this, nothing. Because recently I was just looked at one of our, uh, out in my, the city over, the one that I work in, because I'm, I'm concerned about that, Seaside. There's a school there. It's a Catholic school. Mm -hmm. and they removed what they called, uh, what was it originally called? It was called 
it was a Bible study group, but it wasn't mm -hmm. called Bible study or anything. It was something simple just to go over the Bible as a literature format. Mm -hmm. Just, to, as just using to it as fables. Using sure. it as fable. Sure. Mm -hmm. That's all that we're trying to do is use it as a moral standards, a moral grounding, mm -hmm. something to help relate the children to understanding certain things when they grow older. Sure. But they removed it and they put in this new thing called Rainbow Club. Mm -hmm. Now, I totally would understand if Rainbow Club was arts and crafts and painting and all that stuff, because that would be great, because then it's learning motor skills, motor functions, mm -hmm. techniques, creating the minds, making it creativity, creating imaginations, going down that, what I, going, coming out of the rabbit hole. I don't like mm -hmm. to say going down the rabbit hole, because from what I'm understanding, we all start in this little, I guess it's the cave theory, mm -hmm. where you start in the cave and then you, the, light, the further you come out, the more bright it gets and there's this pain that comes with that light, but it's a good pain because you're learning, you're understanding, you're going, oh my gosh, your mind just breaks into this wondrous place and then it's like, oh, great, we're losing that. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm seeing. And I think we need to come back to that mm -hmm. and you know, actually guide our students on how to do it properly, not just our, not just law, fundamentally reasons and sure. logic and stuff there needs to be a moral foundation behind those reasons and those logics and I I argued with a transgender the other day we had a disagreement me and her are great we're good we're friends but we have disagreements on things and I think they they did come off a little harsh they thought that I was being like trying to put them in a box mm -hmm. but when someone talks about their religion or their what they believe in don't I think that we're teaching our children to hate on other people that have a different view. Mm -hmm. I think we need to start learning to accept those other Absolutely. views. Absolutely. And I get that we can disagree, but where's the respect in the disagreements? I think mm -hmm. that we're losing that alone. We're not teaching our children respect either. Mm -hmm. So that's, I believe, the number one thing we should teach is respect. Absolutely. The first and foremost. Absolutely. Because we need to put authoritative figures as teachers in the schools, not this pronouns and sexual biology and you know what you, like the sex ed stuff that they teach in is okay if you keep it fundamental and back to the basics none of this woke mm -hmm. ideology mm -hmm. no student should know anything about your sexual preferences or your political views you're there to instruct them on basic information that is fundamentally fact yeah, not subject ideology Mm -hmm. We're back to objective teaching, mm -hmm. not subjective teaching. You mm -hmm. start going into the subjectivity when you get further along in your education. Of course. Of so, because that's a whole wide of ranges where your imagination could just go wild there. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I've gone there before. Mm -hmm. It's it's crazy. I've drawn some really cool things and stuff lately, but that's why I'm running. I'm trying to bring back our moral standings, a moral mm -hmm. compass. Mm -hmm. And I will say, I am a follower of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I don't like to use the word Christian too much because it's getting hated, it gets hate on so much. But I also see why they hate on it so much because there is so much attachment to that where it brings down someone's morals or something or it makes them feel like that comfortable to be around you because you might push their faith on you mm -hmm. well i'm as a follower of jesus christ i'm not going to push my views on you that's not my point my point is all right this is my morals due to the bible the word is my my guidance for my morals that's me that's how i'm going to live my i'm going to do my best to live my life by the bible as best i can however the bible has so many facts Mm -hmm. And so many true historical um, things that it's hard not to ignore it as truth as well. Mm -hmm. So it, there's, there's a double standard to it, and it's like a double-edged sword that God gave us almost. It's like it can cut one way, but then it can also cut another way. But it cuts us gently enough to just give us enough push to stand up, mm -hmm. be courageous, speak out, use your voices. Because they're not going to tear us down if we continue to talk. You know, they, the only, the worst, what, what's the worst they can really do, to be honest? They can't really, they don't scare me. I don't have mm -hmm. any fear. I don't, there's no fear in these bones. Mm -hmm. As long as I have God on my side, mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing to fear. Mm -hmm. And so I'm saying if you're a DX transgender or a D transgender, however you want to use the phrase, I personally think if you use the word D transition, it means you're in the process of coming out of who you are and discovering yourself. And then when you realize who you are, I call that X transgender because that's the end of something. That's the, the, the premise of X is referring to something that ended that was a complete and now you find you came to the foundation and that's where i'm at in my life mm -hmm. i'm at the x transgender life i i gave up that life because i realized it was gender dysphoria it wasn't this uh gender uh what do they call it gender theory gender theory is the word i get that 
Um, it's a different word, a different term that it came up to me the other day. It's called gender, um, I can't remember the name of it. However, it's, it's this ideology that sits, like you said, it sits in this subjective area of mm -hmm. our learning. And it's okay to figure out who you are as mm -hmm. a child because we're all going through that. So I just want to leave people to let them know like, if you want to find me, you can go to my website. It's called baconforschoolboard.com, and you can find me there. There's a donation link at the bottom. This coming out and speaking takes a lot of money, especially signs. Mm -hmm. Signs are the most mm -hmm. expensive thing. I've driven all the way through this area. There's so many signs. Mm -hmm. Just one of those signs is so expensive. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. So thank you for allowing us to have this talk. I well, really thank you. It. I really enjoyed getting to know you today. And